Hi, in this video we are going to talk about a theoretical background for the closest pair of points problem. So let's get started. Of course, what, what, what is this problem about? We are given an array of n points in a two-dimensional plane and the problem is to find the closest pair of points in the array. Quite straightforward. Of course it has several applications, for example air traffic control. We may want to monitor planes that come too close together because they might collide. And of course we need some fast algorithm in order to be able to monitor it very very quickly. The brute force approach is very very slow. It has quadratic time complexity and we need something faster. So divide and conquer approach might help to achieve linear rhythmic time complexity and log n. So what is the algorithm? First of all we sort all points according to the x coordinates. Then divide all points into two subsets with the help of middle index. We just have to calculate a middle index and we have to divide this sorted array into two subarrays, left array and right array. Then we have to find a minimum distance recursively in the two subsets. So we find a minimum, the D1. D1 is the minimum distance between the closest points in the left subset. And D2 is the minimum distance of the closest pair of points in the right subset. Of course, because we are looking for the minimum, then we have to calculate the minimum out of these smallest distances. So we have to consider that what's the, what's the smallest, D1 or D2. There's a built-in function in Java, for example, the math that mean D1 and D2. And it, it, this distance is going to be the D. And then we have to check the neighborhood of the middle line, this so-called strip, because they may be points that are closer to each other than this minimum D1 and D2, so the, the D value. So, so there when we get a strip minimum we are going to see the illustration. And then of course we find the smallest distance in the strip and finally we return the minimum. So we just have to calculate minimums over and over again. And this is the typical divide and conquer procedure. In the divide and conquer procedure as we can see we divide the whole problems into subproblems. We are going to calculate the subproblems in a recursive manner. This is the divide part and the conquer part is that we, that we combine the solutions in order to get a final solution. You may guess that okay we have been talking about dynamic programming. It's the same. No, it's not the same. As far as dynamic programming is concerned, there the subproblems are overlapping, which means that we have to track a dynamic programming table. We have to memorize some values in order not to calculate over and over again. Here, this is not the case. These problems, as far as divide and conquer methods are concerned, are not overlapping. It means that we are not going to calculate it over and over again, so we do not need a dynamic programming table. We do not need memorizing and storing values in a two-dimensional array, for example. Here, we're just going to calculate subproblems that are independent of each other. In dynamic programming, they are not independent of each other. So this is the algorithm. We are going to implement it, and I think during implementation it will be much more clearer. So for example, we have a set of points in a two-dimensional plane. We sort it according to the x-coordinate. Then we divide the points into two subsets recursively. Here, for example, we calculate the middle node and we, have, we, we can decide with the help of a quite simple iteration that we are going to create the left subset and the right subset. And we calculate the minimum distances recursively for the left subset and for the right subset. I denoted with sigma 1. So sigma 1 is the distance between the closest pair of points in the left subset. We calculate it for the right subset. This is the sigma 2. So sigma 2 is the distance between the closest pair of points in the right subset. Okay, then we calculate the minimum distance out of these sigmas. So the sigma, the overall, because we are looking for a minimum. 
we do not bother whether it is on the left or on the right subset, we just want to find a minimum. So of course we have this sigma 1 and sigma 2, we have to decide what's the minimum. Math that min is going to do it for us. And it's very important that we have this strip line in the middle point. We may sometimes end up in the situation when two points, one of them points are in the left subset and one of the points is in the right subset, but they are the closest points in the whole array. So it is not a good approach just to consider the left and the right subarray because we would end up in a false situation, a false solution. So there may be situation like this. And we are going to cope with this problem if we consider, we know that the minimum distance we have seen so far is the sigma. So we just have to consider an interval which length is sigma plus sigma, which is two sigma, in the neighborhood of the middle line. So we have to check, and it's very important, that in linear time complexity, whether in this region, in this two sigma length region near the middle line contains pair of points that have less distance than this calculated sigma. Because we would end up a situation, as we have seen earlier, that okay, there's a point in the left subset and there's a point in the right subset, but they are the closest pair of points in the original array. The intuition is that finding the closest pair of points in the strip would take quadratic time because it is the same problem we have been considering so far. So we just have to sort it according to the x coordinate and use the same recursive divide and conquer algorithm to get the solution. Or, or maybe another guess would to sort it, but the sorting algorithm would take longer than linear time complexity, and we are after a linear time complexity algorithm. If you want to prove it, then within this strip, because the sigma is very, very small, it, we are able to construct an algorithm, we just have to use two nested for loops and we are able to get the minimum distances within this region in linear time complexity. And it is quite counterintuitive because you may guess that, okay, we have a nested for loop. This is the typical sign of a quadratic time complexity subprocedure. But no, because we have so many points outside this region and we have very, very few nodes that we have to consider, we can prove it. I mean, you can read it on articles, on, on uh, university web pages, and so on, that we can guarantee that because we have so few points we have to consider, this algorithm will be linear. No matter that we have a nested for loop, it is going to be linear. And this is what we are looking for. The other problematic part, you may guess that, okay, we have a linear time complexity algorithm here. How would we end up with a n log n time complexity algorithm? And this is what the so-called master theorem states, that if we have certain conditions, there are several articles and it would take a lot of time to get a full grasp on master theorem, but it states that no matter, sometimes we have a linear time complexity sub-procedure in an algorithm, and we would end up with a n log n, so linear rhythmic time complexity. There is no contradictions here. So it's very, very important that with the help of this divide and conquer algorithm, we can divide the whole array into a left subarray, a right subarray, we calculate the minimum distances recursively over and over again. But we have to consider this strip and we come to the conclusion that within this strip we are able to find the minimum distance in linear time complexity and that's what we are looking for. If we are able to construct linear time complexity to find closest pair of points and the distance of these closest pair of points in this two sigma length interval near the line, the middle line, then we are okay. We are able to construct a faster algorithm than the brute force form. So that's all about a theory. In the next video, we are going to see the implementation. I think it will be more clearer. Thanks for watching.